Hello everyone, and welcome back. Tonight I have four very special stories for you relating to the infamous Dog Man. Stay tuned. Be sure to lock your doors. Please enjoy. My father owns a junkyard, and it's kind of been our family business. We don't have a lot of money, and we don't make a lot of it either, but it's something that's been in the family. It's a little hole in the wall shop, but we take pride in our work. Something you should know is that we're out here in eastern Texas. It gets humid in the summer, sometimes unbearably so. The junkyard that my family owns and operates is fairly large. Well, the lot of land anyway. Around the junkyard is acres of undeveloped land, most of it being open with thick shrubbery and brush. There isn't any woodline or forest for quite a ways. I'd say a couple miles at least. We're a bit out of town. Now something that's been going on recently is I've been seeing this large black dog-like thing walking around our property. At first, I've had to rub my eyes because I don't quite believe what I'm seeing, but it's true. This thing looks like a bodybuilding son of a gun. Very sharp features and ears just like a Doberman Pinscher. I've seen it walking on two legs, two human-like legs, not haunches at all like a dog. This thing's body resembles a man's more than anything. The first thing that came to mind was some of the depictions of the dog people you see in Egyptian hieroglyphs. I've seen it outside the fence at night and wandering around our junkyard from time to time. It's always scared me, but I've never been one to actually talk about it to my father for fear of ridicule and disbelief. I just keep it to myself. Like I said, this thing has been showing up for the past few months. The hotter it's been, the more it's been showing up. I'm not sure what the relation is there. Things have gotten more serious now, because it's been showing up more and more. It's been acting more and more aggressive leaving claw marks on things and trying to break into the cars, as well as our little shop. Just recently, this animal has completely devoured and tore apart our family dog. We had a huge mastiff, who we had trained to guard at night. But last week, we heard him whimpering and crying, and what sounded like wolf howling and growling. This happened beyond the fence, mind you. The next morning, only part of his body was there, but was mostly eaten and disemboweled. My father was becoming a believer, quickly. We still deal with this issue about every night, and my dad has begun stocking up on ammunition. He hasn't had to shoot at it yet, but I fear that time is coming soon. It hasn't tried to attack us yet, but I feel like things are about to get a whole lot worse. Does anybody know anything about this animal, and how to get rid of it? When I was a little girl, my parents owned a beautiful house out in the country. My father was successful with real estate, so he was able to buy us a three-story house, with pastures and woods as our backyard. What was always nice is when you go back past our backyard pasture, the land dips down into a hill where it levels out with a small creek. It was a wonderful place to play and have fun as a kid. There would be many summer days I'd spend down there by the creek playing and having fun. I used to have a golden retriever. We called her Harmony. She was such a sweet baby. She always played with me and we grew up together. My parents got me her as a puppy when I was just a little girl and she ended up passing right before I graduated high school, due to old age. She was an amazing dog, protected me in many situations. Anyways. The creek is what's the most important part here. This was a beautiful little woodland area. It's exactly what you'd expect from a Disney scene. A little creek with beautiful brush and trees around it. It made the perfect drinking spot for many small animals and I spent a lot of time sitting up against the tree reading books too. There was one time that I had a strange encounter 
with two creatures down by the creek. I remember it was an early morning that I was getting ready to go outside and play down by the creek. I usually always bring my dog with me as I know she loves to come with me. This time though, she acted weird. She kept whining and looking out the door. I didn't know exactly what her deal was, not at the time, so I just thought, fine, I guess, I'll go and have all the fun by myself. So I went down to the creek and was playing for quite some time. I remember at one point listening around and noticing the woods were dead silent. I thought that was weird, since normally the birds are always singing and the forest is full of life. I began to hear rustling and what stepped out of the brush made my blood freeze cold. This hulking wolf creature, what I can only now describe to you as a werewolf, stood there. It just sized me up and stared at me. As I'm staring at this thing, I hear wood cracking to my right. I look over, and it's another, one of these things squatting on a nearby thick branch, just looking at me, no more than ten feet off the ground. I was terrified, but what I couldn't understand is why they both looked different. The creature in front of me was hulking, very muscular, but resembled a black shaggy wolf with piercing yellow eyes. I remember its ears were very pointed and had tufts of fur at the top of them. It looked very wild, but looked like a killing machine. The other one was also sizing me up from the tree. It looked totally different, though. It was much redder and browner, less shaggy, and much leaner. Its face looked entirely different, too. It looked much more hyenish than it did wolf, and had a much uglier face. Both were just intently staring at me, like they weren't expecting me to be there. I started screaming and crying, and I ran as fast as I could to my house. Being a little girl, I told my parents what I saw, and they told me I wasn't allowed to play down there by myself anymore. It would be years before I went back down there, not until I was a teenager, and even then, it still didn't feel the same. We ended up moving shortly before I turned 15. I don't know who lives in the house now, but hopefully they don't have to deal with these monsters in their backyards. Okay, so first I'd like to state that I'm not a believer in cryptids or the paranormal. I find all that stuff to be bogus and bullshit, quite frankly. I've never had any occurrences in my life that would lead me to believe otherwise. I'm having weird things happening on my property that I can't quite explain. I'm not sure what to make of it, other than it could be a large predator gifting me things. I know it sounds crazy but I'm just as confused. Let me tell you my story. I live in town, but I live close enough to a lot of open woods that my backyard just extends and goes on and on. There's not any forest or anything like that for probably several hundred meters. I would say maybe a mile back. It's just all open, many bushes, and occasional trees here and there. Apple trees, to be exact. Anyway, in the past six months, weird things have been occurring. It all started in the winter when I began hearing weird howling noises not too far away at night time. Within a couple weeks of that starting up, I would notice dead animals being left in my yard. Yes, dead animals dropped off not even 50 meters away from my back porch. It's like whatever killed it just carried it and dropped it on the ground. The first was a dead doe. I remember walking out with my coffee one winter morning and seeing the thing and thinking, what on the earth? After walking out to it to investigate, I found that this doe's throat had been completely ripped out. The following months this kept happening multiple times a week. I've had neighbor cats, dogs, raccoons, possums, coyotes, and yes, even cougars. All left close to the same spot, with their throats torn right out, left as if they're just dropped off. 
I don't know if this is some satanic offering from some cult or what, but after some time, I began to try and involve the police. They told me it wasn't worth investigating, and I should just get some surveillance equipment myself. This has been going on for about eight months, and now it happens once to twice a week still. I'm not sure what to do at this point. Do I even want to see what's bringing me these bodies? What in the actual fuck is tearing out throats of cougars and coyotes and leaving them dead in my backyard? Is there some sort of large dog on the loose? I'm starting to get scared. But like I said, I haven't seen anything. The only thing I've been hearing is the howls at night. If I find out what's going on, I'll write you back. Thanks for reading. For preference, I am a female, and this happened to me in the summer of 1984, when I was 13 years old. Well anyways, that summer my parents sent me and my twin sisters to camp for the summer. For obvious reasons, I will be changing the name of the camp to Camp Up High. Camp Up High is located in the Angeles National Forest near Mount Wilson, which is 52 miles from Long Beach, California. Anyways, we get to the camp and are introduced to our camp counselors and given a tour of the camp. I immediately fell in love with it because it was beautiful, but my twin sisters didn't seem too happy. Anyways, later that night after dinner, the counselors gathered all of us together around a campfire to tell us stories, roast marshmallows, and make s'mores. About a week after getting to camp and during dinner, one of the counselors named Running Rooster told us that the next day we would be getting up early and going on a hike to another campground where we would spend the night. Getting up the next morning and after breakfast, we all went to our cabins and gathered up our camping stuff and met up with the counselors at the snack barn. After the counselors made sure that we were all there, we started off on our hike. I remember being excited because I have always loved the outdoors. Now mind you, this was during the 80s, long before cell phones and social media, so hearing stories about cryptids, skinwalkers, and dogmen were very unheard of. I remember how beautiful everything was and the smell of the fresh pine trees and the sounds of nature echoing around me. I also remember while walking on the trail a group of trees to my left and hearing a sound that kind of startled me at first. But when I looked, I realized it was a group of soldiers on the ground for a training mission. While standing there, watching them, it dawned on me that I was way behind my group. So in a hurry to get caught up with them, I didn't notice how quiet everything became around me. After crossing a small stream to catch my breath and realizing it was too quiet, I kind of started getting scared because I still didn't hear or see my group. That's when I first heard something moving diagonally to the right of me. That's also when I smelled whatever it was. Darting my head to the right, that's when I saw it. It was standing half behind one of the pine trees, in shock and unable to move or scream. I stood there staring at whatever this was. Whatever this creature was, I know it had to stand at least seven to eight feet tall. All of its body was covered in semi-long, brownish hair except for its face. It almost looked human, but its arms were longer than they should have been, and its hands were huge. This thing was large, and its legs didn't look like it could hold its weight. I remember how god-awful it smelled. I almost wanted to puke. After standing there for what seemed like forever, I heard my name being called off in the distance, breaking me out of my trance. I took off running towards the group. That's when I realized whatever that was, was chasing me. Hearing my name again, I ran even faster, because I just wanted to get the hell away from it and be safe. After getting back with my group, I realized it had stopped chasing me, so I started calming down, and that's when one of my sisters asked what was wrong 
and I told her. Nothing. I don't know what I saw that day, and still don't. But I can tell you, it was not natural, nor human. And it is something I have never forgotten, and is forever burned in my memory. Hey guys, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the stories. Some pretty scary dogman tales. If you want to hear more, please hit that like and subscribe button, and share, and hit the bell for notifications. And if you have any stories that you would like me to read, just send them to the email, tales to chill to the bone at gmail.com. See you next time.